chica. All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at step functions. Uh, step functions are functions in which there's intervals for the independent variable, or x, for which there is no change in the dependent variable, or y. And then critical values of the independent variable, for which the dependent variable quickly increases or decreases. Let's take a look at how you could identify that you have a step function. It's really quite easy. If you're given a graph, you'll notice that your graph is a series of flat lines with dots at both ends, like these two. Again, we see the flat lines, and then at each end, we've got a dot, same as both cases. If you're looking at a table, you're going to see intervals of x rather than single values, like in a standard table. And usually, you'll see square brackets around the intervals that indicates whether n values are included or not in that particular group. Sometimes, though, you might see it where it's using greater than or less than signs to represent the intervals. Lastly, if you're looking at a word problem, you want to have an indication that it's going up or down in intervals rather than continuously. So you may see words to like up to and including, or between these values, or part of or part thereof. So let's take a look at some examples here. We'll start by looking at a graph. So here's a graph that shows museum admission, ticket price, uh, and your age. We notice that it's actually 10, block, 10 uh, units, and the cost is $10. So every line just represents $1. And we're asked, what is the ticket price for someone who's 10 years old? If we look at our x-axis for someone's age, that's 10. We can't see the exact value, but it would come in between 6 and 12. Maybe, maybe, somewhere, maybe somewhere right around here. And well, what's the cost? Well, we go up, and we see it fits in here. 1, 2, 3, $4. So someone that's 10 will cost $4. That makes sense. Let's take a look at another one. All right, what's the ticket price for someone who's 12 years? All right, well, go to 12. And now as we go up, we notice there's two values at that point. We've got a value here where it shows 12 and a value up here that's 12. Now, we'll notice that these two dots are different. This dot here that's not filled in is called an open dot. And this one up here that is filled in we call closed. Simply put, the closed dot means it's included in that group. So if someone's 12, they're not going to be $4, but they will be $8 in this case, 5, 6, 7, 8. So someone that's 12 is $8, and we know that because it's closed there. Now the reason that we put down these dots is to show where the change occurs. If someone, if their birthday was tomorrow and they were you know, 11.99 years, they're still going to be $4. So there's no change between 6 and 11, but then as soon as you have your 12th birthday, it jumps up. So that's the reason that we have the dots there. Let's look at one more example. What's the ticket price for someone who's 54 years old? Again, when we go over to 54, we know it's two dots, one down here, one up here. Well, which one's closed? Which one's filled in? The one down here. That means it's going to be $4 for someone who's 54 years old. If you're just under 54, you're still $8. Tomorrow's your 54th birthday, you're eight bucks. As soon as you turn 54, you get the discount. All right, let's take a look at a table now. All right, so again, what we notice in the table is rather than having singular values, we're having values that indicate a range or intervals. So what's the cost of mailing a package that weighs 70 grams? Well, if we look over here, we actually don't see 70 grams anywhere. So we have to say, figure out, okay, well, what value is 70 between? And we'll see it fits into here. It's between 50 grams and 125 grams. So the price will be $1.50. All right, well, what's the cost of mailing a package that weighs 199 grams? Well, same thing. 199, that's going to fit into this group right here. Just barely makes it in. So $2.75. And then last, what's the cost of mailing a package that weighs 200? Well, now we've got an issue. 200 shown in this group up here. It's also shown in this interval down here. So we don't know if it's 275 or 450. This time, we're going to look at the brackets. Just like we looked at the dots in the graph, we're going to look at the brackets here. When the bracket is points away from the number, it's, called an, it's an open bracket, same as if the dot was not filled in. 
when the bracket points toward the number, it means it's closed. And just like with the closed dot, the close tells us that this is where it's included in this group. So if the package is exactly 200 grams, it's going to be 450 rather than $2.75. So again, what we notice, 199 grams, you're still in this group. 199.999, you'd still be in this group. But as soon as you jump up to 200, your cost of shipping the package increases. All right, let's take a look at a word problem now. All right, Mr. E has a stilt walking business and charges $150 for the first hour and $125 for each additional hour or part thereof. However, if you hire him for four hours, he'll give you the fifth hour for free. All right, create a table and graph to represent the situation and find the cost to hire Mr. E to do stilt walking for three hours, three and a half hours, and four and a half hours. All right, first thing we need to do is identify it as being a step function. And the easiest way to do that is take a look right here. It says additional hour or part thereof. What does that mean? What that means is that even if he doesn't come for a full extra hour, you still have to pay him for the entire hour. So again, this is a strong indication that we've got a step function here. So let's first take a look at how to create the table. So we said that our table represents intervals. So what's our first interval? Our first interval would represent the first hour, and that's $150. All right, I'm going to put the cost in first. And that's anywhere between zero and one hours. So if you want them for 30 minutes, it would still be 150. And I know that doesn't exactly say it in here, but once we've identified it as a step function because of the part thereof, that means that it would fit in, and, and that should make sense. If you want to bring someone uh, to an event, you usually have to pay an amount just to get them there. We'll look at the brackets in a minute. Well, what happens after that? Well, after the first hour, it increases. It's, a, it's a, an extra $125 for the next hour. So his price is going to go from $250 to $275, and that will take you anywhere from one to two hours. So again, as soon as you go over that one hour, you're going to be into our next group. All right, what about next? Well, two to three hours is another $125. So that's going to put you in at $400. And then the next one, well, said anywhere normally it'd be three to four but in this case it's three to five because you get the fifth hour uh, for free and that would be five hundred and twenty five dollars so we've shown our values of our intervals we've got the total cost here now we just got to go back and put in the brackets so if it's exactly one hour is it hundred and fifty dollars or two seventy five well it says it's hundred and fifty for the first hour so we're gonna put a closed bracket on the one and an open bracket on the one over here. So again, if it's exactly one hour, you're fine here, but as soon as you go over one hour, you have to start paying for the second hour. All right, if it's exactly two hours, it's gonna fit in right here. Uh, it's still gonna be 275. Once you go over the two hours though, you're gonna be paying for the next hour. And the same idea here for three. Of course, in this case, once we go over three hours, we get three to four hours, uh, three to four, and then we get the fifth hour for free. So we can actually go anywhere between three and five hours, over three hours, under, uh, up to and including five hours, for $525. Now, you'll notice over here, I left it open on the zero. And uh, depending on the situation, it can be kind of tricky. In this case, you might say, well, would you have them come perform for zero hours? And probably the answer is no. In that case, you might put an open bracket on it. I'm actually going to put a closed bracket, and the reason for that is, let's say you had Mr. E come to your event, and it ended up uh, raining out. So maybe he never performed, but he showed up. You might, uh, you might ha still have to pay him for the 50 hours, because he did come to do the work. Um, so anyway, you can uh, look at that in your, own, uh, in your own way. Let's take a look now at a graph. So now we've got to look at the graph it. As we showed at the beginning, we're going to have areas where there's no change, and then we'll have the flat lines uh, increasing where we've got our sharp changes. So let's take a look. Between zero and one hour, it's going to be $150. So starting here, 150 and that continues all the way up to one hour. At one hour, it's going to increase 
at that point it'll be two hundred and seventy five dollars so right here and that'll be the cost until we hit two hours and then what happens in two hours we have our jump again another hundred and twenty five dollars up to four hours uh, pardon me up to four hundred dollars and that's good anywhere to three hours and then at three hours uh, after three hours it jumps again to five hundred and twenty five and it stays at that price until five hours it looks like about eight about there so the next thing we have to do then is go and put in our um, is put in our dots to connect with our brackets we said if it's exactly one hour it's going to be down here so I'll put in a solid dot and then up here I'll put in an open dot to indicate that anything over that goes into this next level same idea here if it's exactly two hours it'll be closed open dot at top closed here open and closed it's important to note that uh, you can't have it closed in more than one place otherwise that would be confusing uh, and again at the end in this table here I actually showed it with an open bracket but uh, as we noted earlier uh, you could have the zero it's kind of a tricky one and doesn't really have a lot of real-life significance so now we got a table and we got our graph we want to look at what's the cost of having him do stilt walking for three hours we can go over to our table here or, uh, over to our graph part of me and we can see it's solid at four hundred dollars so the cost of it for uh, three hours would be four hundred dollars if we want to look at our table same thing close bracket on the three means it's included in this group and it's four hundred dollars well what about three and a half hours well three and a half is going to be right in here and then we go up and we can see that for three and a half hours it's going to be five hundred and twenty five dollars and again we could get that same information from the table once we go over three we're in this group here five hundred and twenty five and the last one is saying well what about four and a half hours and again we can see now quite easily we're still in this same uh, this same interval so for four and a half it's going to be five hundred and twenty five dollars as well and there you go thanks for watching